Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. Here we go again. I'm glad you could join me. This may be your last calm Wednesday before the Valentine's holiday, and it's probably not really calm in your world. And this week, try to take a breath. Next week's going to be even harder. We all know that. But what the heck? It's Valentine's Day. It's what we do. It's the holiday of love. It's the holiday we love to hate, all those things. But today, we get to be here and we'll talk about Valentine's and getting ready for it. Yeah. Things that you can do to make your life a little bit better. I've got my glasses in case I have to look at things to be prepared. I've got my coffee so that I am ready to go. I brought the phone up to remind you, if you're watching on your phone, turn it sideways and that way you can get a larger picture. If it makes you crazy with the comments coming through because you want to see the picture, if you swipe it, it puts it in silent mode and then you don't have to be looking at it. Kind of an interesting little tidbit. If you're on your computer, you can go to full screen. If you're watching me during dinner, you can watch me on your TV. If you're watching me while you're working, so be it. Maybe you're sitting there tying bows for the coming holiday season. Yeah, it's right around the corner. So today, 2222, I love it. I am really into numbers. 2222, we're getting ready for Valentine's. So it's a little bit calmer. If you are making bows, let's talk about that for just a second. Because today, my plan is just to share thoughts with you that might help you to get better. And you may have already seen this. If you are on our Tulip Tuesday mailing list, you got this one already. If you forgot it, this will be a reminder. If you're not on the Tulip Tuesday mailing list, let us know. All you have to do is subscribe to the newsletter and then we'll send it to you. And it's just great tips to help you get ready. Susie, if you'd post the link for the newsletter and Caledonia, because they're out there with you in the virtual world. In the studio, we have Parker on tech and Marisa. Michelle's not with us today. Michelle's on the other side of the wall because she's with the class. Students are working away. We've got Carolyn with us in the virtual world, and we have you. If you haven't put your tulip in yet, do so. Let us know where you're from and start working together. Start collaborating. Start to get to know each other. If you're making bows, my first Valentine tip when you're doing bows is pull off a lot. Get it ready so you don't have to think about it. Then leave a pretty good sized tail. Make your loop. It's optional whether you do that center loop or not. And sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So you can kind of think about that. So the center loop, but then loop, 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 loop. But then, rather than taking the time to get your scissors out, just grab a wire. And this wire is longer than I need, so I'm going to take the moment and cut it down. because I don't need this much wire. Get in there, there we go. And then I'm going to take a moment and cut myself some more bits of wire. So just smaller strips like so. Then rather than picking up your scissors, just go on down. Make another bow. So you save yourself time by not having to stop, get the scissors, make a cut, go on. Instead, you're just making a string of bows you can leave it with a wire on. This time, I'm actually cutting the wire off and down. I'm not leaving it long because I don't want the wire to be part of my finished business. So it's just kind of in there. Let's do one more so that you can really see what I'm doing. So I'm making a circle, making my center loop, twisting, then looping. So I do one in the center two that are kind of small, then two that are a little bit longer. And then I wire that off, 
just a small bit of wire. I'm using a 22 gauge for those of you who want to know. If you've been to flower school, you know that we talk about the different gauges of wire and what you use for what. I'm using a 22 for this because it allows me to twist without really making my hands sore. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. Okay. Now I would take these and I would just hang them someplace out of the way but where you can reach them. Then come Valentine's Day when you need a bow, you just go back and you cut one off. It's already tied and the reason I leave those extra ends, I can just take that then, tie it around a vase, bring it back, give it a twist, and then knot it so that it keeps everything right where I want it. I can kind of adjust, fluff it out, but you don't have to make a bow come Valentine's Day. Now, if you haven't already made your bows, get out there and do it right now. You need to do this right now. But don't leave it till next week. Get all your bows done. So that's the first tip for getting ready for Valentine's Day. Now, reality is, this year, everything kind of falls together all at once. We've got Valentine's Day just around the corner, and just before that, we have the Super Bowl, and then we have this 2222, which is pretty exciting, and we just had the Lunar New Year. Yesterday was the Lunar New Year, so I purposely wore my red for Lunar New Year. Red stands for prosperity and happiness. And then the other color that is used oftentimes with Lunar New Year is gold. So I wore my gold jewels, my gold earrings. Gold stands for wealth. And my new ring, thank you to Heidi. That's just beautiful, I love it. Absolutely gorgeous. So Heidi, if you're out there, thank you. My gold ring for Lunar New Year. I thought, how perfect is that? Red and gold. And that helps me get ready for Valentine's. Linking about prosperity, happiness, and wealth. I think we all should wear red and gold for the next two weeks so that we do this together. So as I pull out some flowers and such, what else is going on out there, Parker or Marisa? I got a lot going over here on Facebook. Um, let's see, we have uh, John, Scott, Beatrice, who loves your blouse. And we Thank have you. Me, and Deb and Cherie, Roxy, David, Kim, Rose, Janet, Julia as well. Loves your pretty shirt. And we have Wayne tuning in who's actually in the classroom right now. Wayne, you get back to class. You're not supposed to be watching <laughs> us live. Break. Oh my gosh, you better be on break because <laughs> you're supposed to be doing your uh, clutch. You're supposed to be designing. You're not supposed to be watching me. You do this after class is over. <laughs> and we also have Denise, Heather, Robin, Kim, Mary Kay, Terry, uh, let's see here, Deborah, Jessica, and Gloria's with us, and she just graduated from the Basic Floral Design Online. You just got a signer certificate. Hey, Gloria, I just had a whole stack of certificates at my desk, and I was signing away. It was crazy. I was like, oh, my gosh. This design isn't really Valentine-y, but I thought so appropriate because of Lunar New Year and the fact that oranges have symbolism in the Lunar New Year as well, again, to bring health, wealth, and prosperity, all of that. In fact, a friend of mine posted on their Facebook page where they had been rolling the oranges in their new apartment because that was to bring them luck in the new year. And I thought, how perfect is that? Well, I wanted to share a technique with you that I saw from one of our students. So Kyle, I don't know if you're out there or not, but this was a technique that you shared on Facebook and Instagram. And I thought, how brilliant is that? And it was a way to add in tangerines or oranges into your work. You know, Parker, I'm going to have you turn off my thing. That's making me crazy looking at that. That's not going to work. It's like, oh, okay, that's done. <laughs> I was trying a new little gizmo to think if it would make it easier to talk to you, and it doesn't. It just makes me go dizzy. So I'll just talk to you instead. So that's better. But um, 
What Kyle had shown was when you want your oranges that have the leaves on them, and sometimes you can find them at the grocery store, but oftentimes you can't. And so then how do you do your designs if you want to do the leaves? And I thought, oh my gosh, that was the smartest thing ever. So using a small wire, either like a 26 or a 22, go ahead and wire a salal leaf, because it looks sort of like a citrus leaf, just like so. And then tape that. Just like you learned in flower school, you know how to wire and tape a leaf, getting that done. Then using part of an 18 gauge. You don't need the whole thing, but maybe you need a little bit more than your fruit. Then tape this. Then you can go back and add on your leaf. Okay. Then just simply, simply, because you're a graduate and you know how to do this, because you learned it in flower school, feed that through. It was funny because the class actually did use oranges in class on Monday. So I was coming through going like, oh, I'll just steal some of their oranges. Not happening. They used every single one. So I had to dash to the grocery store at the very last minute before live today to get some more oranges. So then I pierced through, then I bend the wire into a hook okay, and push it back up so that it's pierced through the bottom. And I can bend my leaf down and then I have this ready to work with. I'm going to do that one more time and do it with a little bit longer one so that you can see. So again, tape your wire, then wire your leaf. Now this isn't really Valentine's but aren't you glad you learned it? So there's your bad joke for the day. Um, because we all need to just learn new techniques and new tricks so that we can make our designs pretty fabulous. Again, just adding that on to my master. I'm gonna leave my top a little longer this time. So you're kind of making like an extender, sort of. I'm making an extender, yeah. And then feeding it through. And this time I'm going to leave it a little longer, but I don't need that much of the wire left over. And giving it the little hook. feeding it in, and then you've got your orange. Now you could always go back and glue a leaf on as well, but my thought was to use this basket, and it does have a liner in it, so that I can put water in. And this basket was a gift, so no, you can't go buy it somewhere. It's old, and it's a favorite, but it is just a gift, but then, you can take your oranges and just hook them over and let them become part of the design. Perfect for the new year and incorporating a little bit of whimsy into your arrangements. You can even bring one up to the top here. Thinking about line, carrying it from the base upwards. Could even lay one just on the table if I wanted to, so that it goes together. Then as I have the base set, I can go back and starting in 
adding flowers and I'll stick with red because it is Valentine's and so red would be appropriate. So I've got some beautiful red roses. Thinking about getting it deep enough into the water, but I don't want leaves down inside. I'm letting it drop. So again, while you're placing those in, just want to ask everyone out there in Tulip Land and out on Facebook and YouTube to just give some hugs out to Verga because she is feeling better. Oh, good. Yes, yeah, she was not. She had a little bit of a health snafu. So, Verga, I'm glad you're feeling better. That makes me feel good. And I, I don't know, is how's Amanda's mom doing? Is Amanda with us? And hopefully your mom is doing better. I know you were getting crazy busy getting ready for Valentine's and having to worry about your mother at the same time is pretty scary. And Cherry, she's still in bed. She broke her leg. Oh. And so trying to get ready for Valentine's with a broken leg that she just had surgery, I'm like, oh my goodness. All of these people have been affected by the ice. And now, if you're in the Midwest, you know that the ice and snow is coming at you hard right now. Be super careful. Be super careful because we need you and you've got to be ready for the Valentine's holiday. So what else is going while I keep poking some flowers in here? I can shout out my YouTubers over here. Yeah. We have Annie, Debbie, Heidi, Therese. Christy, Carrie, Bubba, Christine, Darnell, Elaine, and Jerry chatting right now. Kind of a light group today. Grand. Okay. Well, if you know somebody else who should be joining us, we'll be finishing up our New Year's design and then moving on to more Valentine's. I know that many of you are struggling right now with getting product in for Valentine's Day. I saw that Carl was frustrated because his supplier just, um, well, he found out the supplier wasn't going to be able to provide the things that he needed. The supplier hadn't really told him. So customer service, fail. Um, but we're all kind of in this boat right now where we're trying to figure out how do we get the things we need and service our customers within the reality of what is. And it's getting to be kind of hard. Now, by doing a combination of, say, spray roses and standard roses, it's one way you can do Valentine's in case you don't get exactly what you wanted. You can adjust, and I think that's something we all have to be ready for. This year of all, we may have to do some adjusting and um, figure out different ways to do things. You'll notice that I'm not going to use any floral foam today because oftentimes right now you can't get floral foam. It's just not available. And it's something that we always took for granted and now all of a sudden you can't take it for granted. So what else is going on out there? So Sarah, uh, well for one, we have, a, we, have a, we have one Sarah who is joining us for the first mm -hmm. time. Hi Sarah, nice to meet you. And I don't, remember if this is actually the same Sarah who commented earlier, but this Sarah, going back to your little bow chain that you made, um, she one time made a bow chain for corsages once, and a customer saw it and liked it and wanted to buy it. I love it. Oh my gosh. Isn't it funny how sometimes we do things for one reason, and then all of a sudden people want them for another reason, and you're like, oh, no, I need these. They're for mine. And you're like, oh my gosh. So now I'm adding just a little bit of lily grass um, and wanted it to have some softness. So using the back side of my knife and just pulling and then placing it in. So next tip for Valentine's, because we're going to design away, but I'm just going to do tips at the same time. This tip is also a repeat from Tulip Tuesday. So you may already know it, but it's very timely. And so I thought this would be a very important one to set in. I'm going to set this aside. You can see the fun and whimsy that I learned from Kyle. So thank you for sharing this. And we'll get a picture of it so that you can see it um, a little more close up. But um, now you know how to do it when you need some leaves on there. I had a quick question about those over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jerry wants to know if, are those still safe to eat after that wire has passed through them? Do you know? 
Oh, yeah. Norma over here wants to know that too. Can you eat them? You know, I mean, technically you probably could because it's tape and wire, which isn't deadly, but I would not suggest it because you have entered a contaminant in there and in your flower shop, you know, I didn't sanitize my hands before I did this, so I've touched it with my flower hands. So technically it's not deadly. Is it a wise thing to do? No. Marisa. Um, before you move that arrangement, can you bring that closer to the camera? And I would just like to point out the, the differences in the reds and the, and the contrast, how beautiful it reads so beautifully on the camera and the depth. Oh, good. Sometimes I get lucky, so that's pretty great. So yeah, you know, I like to combine different reds and it's the Freedom Red Rose and then the Deep Red, which I believe is Garnet Spray Rose. And we actually had a couple of different red and Marisa says, ooh, swap me out. These are darker and prettier. And sure enough, they are. And they do work so well. And then going all the way to the orange just gives me a nice palette that Kind of goes to the analogous family, but not quite, because it's just red-orange, which normally you would have a little more of a broader spectrum. But that analogous touch with the deep brown of the basket just works. Makes it fun. Okay, now I'll make it go by, and you guys can get a picture of it later. I could have tied a bow on it, too. That's probably what I should have done. Oh, badly, man. But we'll go ahead and do something else. Another tip for Valentine's, once you've been dealing with all those roses, because chances are you're going to be touching literally hundreds of roses in the next week. Some of you will be touching thousands of roses in the next week. And we all know they have thorns. And we all know it makes your hands hurt. And what I find is your hands just get those little pricks in there and it's like little tiny infection points all around and they get swollen, they get sore, they hurt. If you'll take hydrogen peroxide, okay, just your local drugstore, probably the grocery store, any place, hydrogen peroxide, pour it into a container, okay, then I take that container of hydrogen peroxide and I actually put it in the microwave just for a little while because you want it to be warm. It's more comforting on your hands. Then take your hand and just put it down into the hydrogen peroxide. I use straight. I don't dilute it. I do 100% hydrogen peroxide. Stick my hand in and your hand is going to start tingling and burning. It's gonna tingle to the point it hurts. Take it out, put the other one in. Let it tingle. What is happening is it's pulling all those impurities out of your hand. Then take it out, put the other one back in. And I do that three times. So I put them in until I just can't take it anymore. Take them out. If your container is big enough to do both hands at the same time, great. But then just go until it tingles and you go, oh, I can't take it anymore. Take it out. And it just stops. It's like, okay, well, I don't know what my problem was. Put it back in. Let it tingle. Take it out. Then dry your hands off and use a really good hand cream. I use CeraVe most of the time, although I've also used a product called Bag Balm. It's actually for cows. I know. I know. Bag Balm. And then put white cotton beauty gloves, you know, just cotton gloves on. So you've purified your hands, you've moistened your hands, then you put the gloves on and you try to get at least a little bit of sleep before you have to go back to work again. And you'll find that your hands will feel so much better. It's just like a magic tool. So if you saw that on the Tulip Tuesday, you already know that. If you missed it, now you know it. If you haven't subscribed to the Tulip Tuesday, just subscribe to the newsletter. Monday you'll get an inspirational video. Tuesday you'll get a pro tip. Wednesday you'll find out what we're doing on live. Thursday I'll share a little bit of wisdom with just a quote that we love. And Friday we'll either share a slideshow or a playlist. So you'll get five different bits of information from us. So it's kind of fun. So 
Janet had a question earlier, Leanne. What are your thoughts on this? As an event designer, as Janet is, is it wrong that she's kind of thankful that she's not in a retail shop for Valentine's Day? Oh my gosh, again, it's that love-hate. If you're an event florist, you almost feel thrilled and privileged because you're not doing that work. But if you have a flower shop, you know that that work helps you get through some of those days that you didn't have business and also invite, you know, introduces you to new clients to do potentially an event later. So I don't think there's a right or wrong. There's just different. I know the first time that I didn't work a Valentine's because I worked for Valentine's until I was from the point I was 16 till probably, what would it be? I was probably almost 45, maybe 46, 47. So I was in my 40s, let's say later 40s. So from age 16 to later 40s, so at least 30 years, I worked Valentine's Day. So the first time that I didn't work Valentine's, I was crushed. I just thought I was going to cry because it's what you do. And now I'm kind of excited that I don't work Valentine's Day. So. You almost feel guilty. You do feel <laughs> guilty. I know I never go to a flower shop because I don't want to talk to them and have them see me because I always feel bad that they're working so hard. But um, I'm really grateful that I had that time to do it when I did. And I'm also grateful that I'm not doing it now. I've been talking to um, some people who are setting up to do full Valentine's in a storefront, brick and mortar, and getting all their orders together, getting organized. I've talked to some that are doing their first Valentine's on a retail side, setting up like a pop-up. And then I've talked to some that they've decided they're not gonna do Valentine's, that it's just not their thing. And I think all of those things are good, but the key is to make sure that whatever it is is the one you need or want for your business. So I'm using aluminum wire, it's a 16 gauge, it's from the Oasis company, and I got more than I need here, but I couldn't remember how much I truly needed, so I just got some. Um, carnations, when they come in, if you're fortunate, they're super fresh like this, but if they're super fresh like this, there's not a lot of value. So taking the time to actually open them out to get a fuller bloom is much better. Uh, it doesn't shorten their life, but it makes them so much prettier. And it does make a world of difference because if you're selling this or this, of course they want that one. So taking the time to open them and fluff them, let them get hydrated before you go to design with them, have them be gorgeous. And then these are already opened out for me, so I'm going to grab those. And I don't know how many of them I'm going to need. Then, this is a technique that I learned many, many years ago from Pear Benjamin. And it's an easy technique that's just kind of fun. Take each bloom, let's put things so that I got it out of, I'm out of control here, pull myself into organization. There we go. Take each bloom and just pierce it through. And you're basically beading your carnations into place. And you do that with each bloom. And Leanne, while you're doing that really quick, because you're uh, making those carnations so gorgeous, Jamel over here on Facebook cannot keep it to themselves. It says, Leanne, you look gorgeous in your black and red outfit today. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I wear black almost all the time and then red is my other color and I've decided that you know if I had to really never wear anything but black and red I'd be happy you know I have a red coat I have red shoes in fact wearing red shoes today um, because red is my color so there's another tip for you while I am beating my carnations what shoes do you wear for Valentine's Day. How do you take care of your feet? And everybody has a different opinion. 
and you know, you might go ahead and write in there. What is your shoe of choice when you work on your feet all the time? I'll tell you my shoe of choice most of the time is a dance go. That seems to work for me. Um, but I also wear a tennis shoe occasionally, and I also wear my cowboy boots a lot, when I, even when I'm standing for a lot. My cowboy boots are, are comfortable. So it's what is best for you. So write in what you want as far as your shoe, and then while you're doing that, and I'm gonna continue threading on carnations, I will tell you the best tip that I learned from Jody Duncan years ago was that when you go to work, Take an extra pair of shoes with you and put one pair in the flower cooler. That way, when your feet are tired and you're hurting and you're uncomfortable, swap out to the other pair of shoes, put your cold shoes on, put your warm shoes that you've been wearing into the flower cooler, and you will find that your feet feel so Good. It just, it's just amazing how much better you will feel. So that's my tip for Valentine's care is two pairs of shoes, one in the flower cooler and one on your feet. No barefoot. That's not good. No flip flops. We don't want anybody cutting their toe when they drop their knife. Now you've got to be common sense here, but you do want to take care of yourself. Definitely. Uh, Leanne, uh, is that uh, wire the rounded kind versus the flat? It is the rounded aluminum wire, 16 gauge, and um, I, it would work with flat wire, but I don't think it would work as well. I think it works best with the aluminum wire that's the rounded version, yeah. And then I have um, someone out there uh, named Cricket Wise and says, Casey is amazing. I'm wondering if they are referring to Casey in the classroom. We do have Casey. I bet that is. And Casey is amazing. Casey is amazing. We've had a lot of fun. Class is really great this time. We've got an advanced class going on. Next advanced class is towards the end of March, I believe. Anyway, this one, we have students that did the basic course online at home and then came to Portland to join us for the advanced course. And so it's really fun to get the best of both worlds, learning virtually and then turning around and learning in person as well. And then we love it because we get to know you online and then we get to meet you in person and it's been just too fun. Then we had some students that did the basic course that were here with us last month and they just stayed over for the fourth week so that they could do all four weeks at one time, become certified floral designers and be ready to go right now. It's like they're going to be gone next week and working for Valentine's, busy, busy, busy and they've got all of their certification done, which is pretty exciting. Then the new class begins on the 28th, and that group will be done prior to Easter and Mother's Day and the whole wedding season, so that they'll be ready to go to work at that point. Now, I'm gonna count these because I know you're gonna say, well, how many is that? And I don't know. I was just putting them on. Let's see, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm going to do a few more on here because I really would like at least 20 because I kind of think about it as doing a bunch of carnations. Oops, I just broke that one, so pulling it back off because I don't want a broken one. So that is my... 18 again since I broke one then I'll grab a couple more here 1920 so this will be 20 carnations when I'm done now the other question you might be thinking well can you do this with a rose you can it doesn't work as well uh, it really works best with the carnations so then after you have them you just bring it around on itself and take the two in so you can see how I have too much wire. So I'm going to get rid of that, save it for something else, get rid of that. Lock these two together. 
and then gathering it. Then I can stop there and do it as a ring, just like so, or I can take it and turn it into a heart but I'm going to go ahead and bind it off first. I think I'll be better off. Need to, and I want to spiral it on itself, so I'm adjusting my stems so I get a nice spiral form. And then I'm going to shorten one side so that the heads all just come out a little better. So one side's longer, one side's a little shorter. I adjust it. Okay. Then once I've got it where I want it, then I bind it using bind wire. Can I do a quick shout out, man? Yeah. Sue yeah. Simpson passed her events class. Yes, she did. I think I have a certificate for her as well. Congratulations. And I think that you finished both basic and advanced. She sure did. So you qualify for the American Institute of Floral Designers testing online. And I definitely encourage you to do that because getting the dual certification, both your FDI and your CFD, just really is a great move professionally. And now that you've already done the work, it's easy to just go ahead and take that one more test. Definitely do that. Uh, and that way you can have your dual certification and be Sue Simpson, CFD, FDI, and the TULIP. Pretty cool. Okay. Now, actually uh, talking about FDI, CFD, do you have an idea of how many of our FDI graduates have their CFD? I do not. I really don't know that count, but that would be a good question and I might have to do some research there. Um, I know that everybody that does the advanced, I encourage them to go ahead and do the full testing, um, but I don't really know for sure who has followed on with that. So, good question. So now I've got my vase with my bow. I already put that together. Add water. Then determining my height and cutting this down because I don't need it to be as long as it is. And then placing that in. Then once I've got it upright, I can go back and adjust it into a heart. And I think that'll show on camera. I'll tip it a little bit. So does it look heart-ish on your view? It does. Yay, thank goodness. It's like, okay, I hope this looks like a heart to you. <laughs> but a great fun way to do carnations that's totally different and gives you just a, a different vibe. It certainly doesn't look like, oh, let's just do carnations. And then all of a sudden, it's a work of art. And you can go back and add jewels to it. Wouldn't that be fun? I think I've got some jewels here. Let's see. Um, they're just little baubles that I have that I think are just pretty and just adding a bit and just adding them in. You can do two, three, five. I'm just going to do the one and that way you can see how that fits together. It gives you a totally different look and just sparkles. If the person wanted to give earrings, wouldn't that be fun just to take earrings and set down in there? Oh, we're going to pretend these are earrings. I know you wouldn't put earrings with glue, but 
if you had earrings, they would have a little post and they could put those in there. Um, but we'll pretend that those are earrings now. Or they could be googly eyes if I was doing an animal, but I'm not Marisa, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so doing the Valentine's with a heart, a little bit different look, something kind of fun. So, so we've done the heart, and then we did Kyle's oranges, so that we put that together for our Lunar New Year. Now I want to do something um, that's not red. Because, you know, you don't have to be red. And who knows what you're going to be able to get on Valentine's Day. I mean, you hope that you can get red, but you don't always know if that's going to be available. So, I stole some curly willow from the class. I know we had dogwood, but I wanted the willow, so I stole it. And then I'm just kind of Got it going two different directions here. Let me take it apart. I do want it to go two directions, but I need to organize it. So I'm just taking willow, and it's very, very, very fresh. So it's pliable. See how I'm bending it? Um, if you don't have pliable, this won't work. Uh, so you've got to have fresh willow to do this. But if you do have fresh, it's kind of a fun technique. So Leanne, while you're doing that, I have a little tiny list on shoes that people like to wear. Cool. What are the shoe story? Okay, so it looks like the winner are actually Crocs. Um, oh no! Yeah. Oh, yeah. not Crocs! Yeah, typically, <laughs> typically because nurses wear them. Um, and then uh, someone else wants to have a tulip charm to put onto the crack, so that may be something we need to add <laughs> to the list here. Um, but Gloria also says uh, crops as well, le leopard print. Um, also, echoes, dan skins, uh, a couple, few people, a cushion mat, and tennis shoes. And I forgot to look this up, but Joseph Siebel shoes, uh, they have flower print tennis shoes. Ooh. I'll look that up. Um, I'm surprised nobody has said Birkenstocks because that would be another one that is sort of a comfortable one that I go, oh, not Birkenstocks. Um, Someone my, did say like squishy sandals, but they didn't actually say Birkenstocks. Birkenstocks. Uh, so what I'm doing, I want this to just sort of come out and about and be flexible. And so I started, and I'm probably too tall, aren't I? So should I shorten this? Um, yep, I'm going to shorten it. I think so. Yeah, okay. So we're going to shorten it down. And then, rather than leave it wide like that, I'm going to go back and take more and weave it through creating a bit of an armature. And then again, getting my bind wire. And Tulip Tuesday, remember to wrap it around your fingers, give it a cut and a cut and that way you can do a whole bunch of it at once so that it just makes it easier and faster then looping it on this side and looping it on this side and then I can take my sides and pull it and secure it. I want it to angle a little bit more. There we go. And Leanne, while you're flexing with that, um, Kara wants to know if we have a floral school in Texas. 
We don't. We have just the one location here in Portland, Oregon, but we do have the online classes so that you can join us from anywhere and you don't have to join us in Texas. You can be here in Oregon and have everything you want right here. And this is turning out different than what I intended. So you guys, we're going to have an experiment because it's not doing exactly what I was thinking at the beginning. But you know what? It's kind of turning out fun. I'm liking the way that it's kind of flipping around on me. And what I'm going to do is bend this end and place it in and create almost like a kabari. So again, thinking about alternative mechanics that you learn in flower school. When you start making a kabari, you are adjusting and building a framework that's on the inside and the outside that creates a nest that then can afford, support your materials. There we go. So just kind of a different approach to it. So it's not where I was headed to begin with, but I'm kind of liking it. So I'm just going to keep going with it. And then bringing this down a bit, and just kind of molding it so that it'll give me some more movement. There we go. Then I can go back and add in more of the willow, getting more movement. And this is the type of thing when you're getting ready for Valentine's, you want to do it now. Don't wait till next week because curly willow is going to hold without any issues at all. And if you do it now, then you can invest a little bit of time so that then when it comes flower time, all you're doing is adding the fresh product and it's becoming more of an artistic element. And so then when people say, well, why is it so expensive? You say, well, it's because of, it's a piece of art. It's a one of a kind sculpture. And it really is because you're doing something totally different. It's not just a vase of flowers. All of a sudden it has personality to it and starts having a whole different look. So I'm going to grab flowers. What else is going on while I start grabbing? We have um, Debbie here, let's see, from British Columbia, and says thank you for all the videos as um, we have been a huge help in their flower adventure. And we have a quite a conversation going about curly willow. <laughs> can, can you grow it? Ah, good question. Curly willow grows in a lot of environments. You have to be careful. It grows virtually like a weed here, but the roots are very, very, very invasive. So you, you don't want to put it too close to any water lines or your house foundation. If you um, don't have a lot of property to where you can put it where it will have room to grow without being touching your stuff, you know, where it would be a problem, put it into a pot and then put that rot, the, the pot, up onto rocks or bricks or something so that it's elevated so that the roots don't grow into the ground and that keeps it so that it's just a little safer uh, and you won't have a problem. And then you can just prune from your tree over and over and over again because it does hold beautifully and keeps growing. And you'll discover that there's different types of willow. And there's the willow like I have here, which would be considered a standard willow. And then there is scarlet willow, which is a bit redder. And then there's blonde willow. And then of course there's weeping willow, where you can get like whips, um, which are just beautiful. Then I can bring my roses up through the top. Let them come down through. Andrea says, if you have a lot of space and a pond, you're in luck. Yeah, they like water, that is for sure. Um, they prefer a, a moist environment. That is true. So yeah, I noticed you only filled up the base like a quarter of the way. Is there a reason why? Because it was heavy and I didn't want to carry it full of water. All right. 
And it is going to need more water because I think some of my stems might not actually reach all the way down. But now that I've set it here and I'm not going to have to carry it, I could go back and add a little bit more. Um, but it's mostly just for the weight. That was that was the only reason. So not not any divine plan. Then I've got tulips. I've got um, the pink Mondial roses. I've got a little bit of stock. I'm giving it a very, very romantic look, but yet with a little bit of the rustic touch because of the willow. So combining the two, and I'll turn it so you can see it actually works from both sides. It's not a one-sided arrangement. And I could add a tulip on this side as well so that it carries it through, finding a perfect spot for it. There we go. Liam, this is an interesting comment from Scott that he's asking everybody else out there. But um, Scott says that he's noticed that all of the higher end orchids seem to be uh, being replaced by more tropical flowers. So more people are asking for, you know, proteas, amphoriums versus orchids. Uh, I think that some, not all, some customers are becoming more aware of the different things that are available. And so they are asking for more specific things like a protea or a different type of orchid or something else that's just a little more exotic, um, which is really kind of wonderful that the customer is beginning to know these things because it allows us to design with flowers that are more interesting. With Valentine's Day, I think that the more that you can show different materials in your work, the better. The other benefit, besides the fact that you maybe will have troubles getting some varieties, so the more you show different things that it all just works better for you, the other benefit is things like Protea are super long lasting. So then the chances that your customer is going to be happy with the longevity of their arrangement is higher. So that's the main reason I'm not doing just a dozen roses because they can see a dozen roses in so many different locations. And so then it's easy to do point of comparison. Oh, it's $19.99, oh, it's $39.99, oh, it's $79.99, oh, it's $129.99, and then it's a dozen roses. You're right, but this isn't a dozen roses, this is roses as a work of art. And so all of a sudden you can charge more. And anytime that you start adding different materials, I think it just works better for you. Um, next tip, because I told you that this was Valentine tips. Next tip is as you have got your orders, because I'm going to assume you've already started taking orders. I hope you've already started taking orders. Take those orders and make sure that you have all the information about the delivery and the card and double check it. Map it out. Make sure that the address is legitimate. You can check it out on Google. You can plug it into a delivery system. If you've got a point of sale system, a shipping system, but check and see if that address is correct. And then take the time to go ahead and write the cards all out and get the address all done. And get your boxes made. So you've got cards, addresses, boxes, everything pre-done right now. You don't need to wait till next week for that. Have those things totally done. Then if there's an add-on sale, like maybe they have a teddy bear, maybe they have a box of candy, go ahead and pull all of that and set it with the box, set it with the order, have all these pieces together so that when you go to deliver, you don't actually forget the balloon or you don't forget the teddy bear, that you've got all the things that you need in your possession, in your hot little hands, so that when you go to pull it and send it out for delivery, that you're ready to go. Another question that I've seen a lot right now is, 
how do you handle the deliveries? Where do you find delivery drivers? How do you get all these flowers out to people when you're so crazy busy and you don't have time to do all those deliveries? Again, we're down to the wire. So if you haven't done it yet, do it now. Do it tomorrow. Don't wait. But check with everybody that ever delivers to you. Check with your mailman. Check with the UPS person. Check with the FedEx person. Ask them if they know anybody who might be available for deliveries. Check with your local fire department. I know it sounds like, really? But you'd be surprised how often they will help with deliveries because they know the city. And if they're off that day, they'd be happy to. Another t um, technique that I used with my store is I worked with a church and their youth group. And it was a fundraiser for their youth group. And that way the parents were kind of the chaperones and the youth group, they made the money. So there would be two people in the car. The parent is driving, the youth would jump out and deliver so they didn't have to wait to park their car. And it just worked out really well that everybody was able to help each other. Uh, you know, and so be thinking about that. Um, utilize your local schools, your local churches, your associations. Maybe there's a garden club that would have people that might be willing to help with deliveries and such. Anybody that loves flowers, that's somebody you could talk to about that. Other thoughts, questions? Everyone just loves this arrangement. Mm -hmm. They love it. Even though it didn't work the way I meant to have but it work. But sometimes when you don't, it turns out better than you thought. You know, that's so true. And, you know, it's just, it didn't, it didn't do what my intention was, but I kind of like it. So I guess that's a good thing. I'm going to add a little more of the amaranthus coming up on this side because it just balances off the stalk on the opposite side and brings that color up a tiny bit more. There we go. Then I could do a bow, but I probably wouldn't. But what could be fun up here would be to take a couple leaves you know, it's because sometimes it's those little touches that are better than bows and such. But if I just took a couple leaves and let's see what do I, I'm going to wire them with a little bit of, and actually I'm going to use brown bind wire and go ahead and just gathering it. So I'm just kind of t clutching it together and then wrapping. Okay. And then twisting it. Okay. I could have used uh, a bullion wire if I wanted a touch of sparkle, but I really didn't want sparkle because this seems so rustic and natural. Then taking another leaf. Oh, he's got a cootie on him. I don't want that. I don't want leaf cooties, there we go, um, clutching it again, then clutching it with the wire, and one more tip. For Valentine's, it's a little bit of self-care, thinking about yourself. We all work so hard to figure out how to get these flowers out to say I love you for all these people and to have it all be just perfect for them, that we sometimes forget to take care of ourselves. Yeah, it's not going right where I want it. Let's get this around there. There we go. Get them right where I want it. It's not staying. They just love, love this slam. There we go. So just a couple leaves at the top that gives it a little different look so that it's not a bow, but it makes it special. 
It makes it just kind of like, ooh, I love that. And then this would be the type of thing that, again, if you wanted to do a little jewel of some sort, Hmm. I don't have a jewel, but I know what's perfect. An FDI certified <laughs> floral designer oh, wow. pin would be just grand on there. Haha. <laughs> Whoops, I dropped it in the water. Oh well, I'll get that later. But just that little bit up there to make Ooh. it special. But your last tip is self-care, thinking about yourself. This weekend, yeah, you gotta do it this weekend because next weekend, too late. So this weekend, plan food for yourself. Plan ahead so that when you're too tired, you're not rushing out to get a hamburger or you're not ordering a pizza. Plan ahead, make soup, and then just put it in your freezer. Maybe buy a roast chicken and then go ahead and cut it up, get it ready. Put it in your freezer. This is coming from the girl who doesn't cook, and I'm still telling you that this is what you need to do. Then get snacks, not chocolate. Get some nuts, get some fruit. Have that ready. And that way, as you get crazy busy, you can take care of yourself, and you'll be able to do more for all these wonderful customers. Those are my little tidbits that I want to share with you about Valentine's. It's one of those holidays that if you don't plan ahead and you don't prepare, you're going to regret it. I invite you to join me this week in wearing red and gold so that we all prepare for prosperity, happiness, and wealth in this Lunar New Year. Surround yourself with a few oranges so that you remind yourself you're looking for wealth and prosperity and happiness. And next week, we'll have Teacher Marisa here sharing more last minute Valentines with you. And then we'll put Valentines away for another year because it's time to look at flower school and getting you all ready to be flowering for Mother's Day and Easter and all the weddings to come. So I'll see you all next week. But for now, get out there, have fun, and do your Valentine's planning. Bye for now. <laughs>